Are you white, heterosexual, cisgendered, male, able-bodied, Christian, English-speaking, middle or owning class, middle-aged? Then you might be suffering from a condition known as privilege. What? Side effects of this heinous disease include having an advantage over people in other minority groups, thinking that you've earned the things that you've achieved in life, and offending people by just existing. What? And if you call us now at the Office of Diversity, Inclusion, and Health Equity at Johns Hopkins Medicine, we will help you to check your privilege, pay your reparations, and teach you to be an ally. The number is 1-800-F-U. Pick up the phone and make the call. Again, that's 1-800-F-U. I'll call now. Yeah, you better. Yeah, you better. Guys, before we get into today's video, if you'd like to support the work I'm doing on this channel, consider becoming a patron to my Patreon. The link is in the description down below. Sign up if you want to, no pressure. Now let's talk about Johns Hopkins Medicine and a recent diversity newsletter that came out this January detailing what privilege is, who has it, and what you can do about it. Now this diversity newsletter was put out by the chief diversity officer at Johns Hopkins Medicine. Her name is Sharita Hill Golden. She is an MD alongside being the chief diversity officer and she took it upon herself this January to tell all those at Johns Hopkins Medicine what exact privilege they hold and what they can do about it. Of course, this created a lot of backlash and we're gonna get to that. But before that, let's take a look at the newsletter itself, what she says about privilege and the list of people that she puts down that have it. Okay, so the list says that privilege is a set of unearned benefits given to people who are in a specific social group. Privilege operates on a personal, interpersonal, cultural, and institutional level, and it provides advantages and favors to members of dominant groups at the expense of members of other groups. In the United States, privilege is granted to people who have membership in one or more of these social identity groups. And you guys know how I feel about privilege. We've talked about it on this show many a time before. You cannot look at a specific group of people that share one characteristic and label them with a privilege that they now get to utilize and exercise over others. It's just simply not the case. Now, more often than not, you hear the phrase white privilege. That's the one that's typically thrown around. But luckily, Sharita Hill decided decided to expand on the list far beyond being white. Let's take a look and see if you fall into one of these many groups. Beyond white people, we have able-bodied people. I guess I hit that one. Heterosexual people, I hit that one. Cisgender people, also in that group. Males, not in that group, but I'm sure many of you are. Christians, middle or owning class people, middle-aged people, and English-speaking people. If you're a member of any of the groups I just listed, congratulations, you have an invisible privilege that you have been exercising over others your entire Entire life. And not only do you have this privilege, you must check it and recognize that you are utilizing this invisible advantage over other people in your communities. For white people, you're exercising your privilege over people of color. For the able-bodied, you're doing so with those who are disabled. And for heterosexuals, I guess you are utilizing your privilege over the now, I don't know, 26 letter long alphabet soup that is every other sexuality that you can identify these days. And so on and so forth for all the other categories that Sharita Hill decided to list in this newsletter. So not only does she define privilege, she gives you a list of categories of people who get to exercise that privilege. She then goes on to say it needs to be checked. And she also goes as far as to say that members of these privileged groups think that their achievements are earned when in reality, they are wholly unearned. So yes, this newsletter went out to the entire staff of Johns Hopkins Medicine, and they all got to read about their inherent privilege and their unearned achievements. Imagine being somebody who's worked hard enough to have a position at Johns Hopkins Medicine and then receiving an email Email detailing your privilege and how your achievements are unearned. I think that would probably piss you off. And of course, this also got leaked on the internet and went crazy viral, which sparked even more backlash and backlash that Johns Hopkins Medicine could not ignore. And rightfully so, because when we actually analyze this idea of privilege, we will find that it's ridiculous. Just because you are a member of one of the groups that is listed in this newsletter does not mean that you exercise a privilege over other people. In fact, there are many people that we would label as being members of the groups defined find in this newsletter who don't have much privilege at all in life. There are plenty of white people who are disadvantaged. There are able-bodied people who are disadvantaged. They are English-speaking individuals who are disadvantaged. You can be a white male Christian who's born in a low-income area that's functioning at the same disadvantage of every single person of color who's living in the same place you are. But no, they'll argue that he's still a beneficiary of white male Christian privilege, whatever that means. And it's kind of hilarious that a newsletter like this is coming out in today's time because it it 
feels like gaslighting. When I look around right now, the people who are truly benefiting from privilege are people of color, are women, are members of the LGBTQ plus community. We can all see it. We all know it's happening. So to get a letter that says it's not is just astounding. Ironically, the newsletter comes from a black woman who, while yes, is a doctor, has been given a made up position. Yes, chief diversity officer, I think is a made up position simply because she is black and female. And I think people are actually starting to catch on to this reality that this diversity, equity, and inclusion BS is in fact BS because Sharita Hill Golden had to publish an apology and send that out to the faculty at Johns Hopkins Medicine. Here it is. It says, dear colleagues, yesterday I sent the January edition of a monthly diversity digest from the Johns Hopkins Medicine Office of Diversity, Inclusion, and Health Equity. The newsletter included a definition of the word privilege, which upon reflection, and I'm sure she does not do much of that, I deeply regret. The intent of the newsletter is to inform and support an inclusive community at Hopkins. But the language of this definition clearly did not meet that goal. In fact, because it was overly simplistic and poorly worded, it had the opposite effect of being exclusionary and hurtful to members of our community. I retract and disavow the definition I shared, and I am sorry. I will work to ensure that future messages better reflect our organizational values. Sincerely, Sharita Hill Golden. Now, am I inclined to believe one single word of this apology? Absolutely not. And I'll tell you why, because I may sound a little harsh here, but in order for her to have the position of chief diversity officer, she has to believe in that definition of privilege, of white privilege, of able-bodied privilege, of English speaking privilege. Her position at Johns Hopkins Medicine, outside of her being a doctor, does not exist without that definition of privilege. And I'm sure Sharita Golden is going to go on to keep that chief diversity officer position. She's going to continue to work to diversify the Office of Diversity, Inclusion, and Health Equity at Johns Hopkins Medicine. So do you believe that she, in fact, is walking back on that definition of privilege that she outlined in the newsletter? Probably not. She's not sorry about the privilege that she defined in that newsletter. She is sorry that that privilege definition was then shared on the internet for her to receive backlash. Johns Hopkins has a long history of being woke and giving into things like DEI, and I think that that's going to continue. Mind you, Johns Hopkins University not too long ago ended up changing the definition of lesbian. The new definition? A non-man attracted to non-men. If that is not woke garbage, I don't know what is. The force that is pushing these changes is leftism. And foundational to leftism is a belief in inherent unearned privilege. That will never change so long as it exists. So while we may have gotten an apology for this miscommunication, it is most definitely not sincere. What's kind of funny, but actually I guess more sad than funny, is that newsletters like this are coming out of an institution named after the man Johns Hopkins, who was a very famous and well-known abolitionist and philanthropist. I'd like to think that Johns Hopkins would still have his logic intact if he were still around to be witnessing this and that he would not be in support of something like DEI and this newsletter being sent out in an institution named after him. And Sharita Hill Golden in the newsletter decides to invoke the name Martin Luther King Jr. She says, we look forward to working with you this year in the spirit of Dr. King and others to achieve our equity and inclusion goals. What's interesting is that I remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. saying that we should judge people based on the content of their character and not the color of their skin. So it's funny that you have a list that starts with white people when it comes to who has privilege. Somebody was not listening during the I Have a Dream speech. If there's one thing that's maybe a silver lining here, it's that the release of this newsletter generated enough backlash that Sharita Hill Golden had to apologize for what she said. Whether or not that apology is genuine, it is good to see a system of accountability being set in place for people who are sharing these bad ideas. What I'd like more than some unfounded apology is is the disillusion of all diversity, equity, and inclusion offices. The very basis for their creation is ridiculous and unsupported by facts or logic, but I digress. We live in the time we live in, and I think DEI offices are going to continue to be created. And while that's still the case, we should take it upon ourselves to call this nonsense out every time we get the opportunity, which I'm sure there will be plenty more of. But those are just my thoughts, guys. Drop your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, I encourage healthy debate, so duke it out, but do so respectfully. And if you like this video, like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a video for you guys, which is every day. And I will see you next time. Yeah, you better. Yeah, you better.